Let's pick things up there for tonight's Political Insider. Joining me, Mike Lillis, senior reporter for The Hill. All right, Mike, general consensus seems to suggest Hillary Clinton won this debate and will maintain her front-runner status. What do you make of her performance last night? Uh, you know, I think the accolades are well-deserved. She came in here knowing what she had to do, and she, and she did everything, uh, everything that, that was on her game plan, no doubt about it. Um, she's had a tough summer. She's had a tough fall. She's getting attacked from Republicans on the right who are going after her over the emails and the Benghazi scandal. Um, and she's getting attacked from Bernie Sanders on policy. Who, you know, he's raising questions that she's just not liberal enough to excite the Democratic base. So the combination has caused her to, you know, to drop a little bit in the polls while Sanders is surging. Uh, it's raised questions about her sense of entitlement as a, you know, member of the, of the big Clinton uh, campaign, the big Clinton family, the Clinton machine, Di really, the political, the political, the political machine. dynasty. Yeah, and uh, and and if you believe the polls, a lot of people simply don't trust her. So she had a, a high bar, and she came out and kind of knocked it out of the park. She knew her vulnerabilities, and she knew that Sanders was going to attack her from the left. Well, let's and talk about that. Many analysts said this debate was Senator Bernie Sanders' chance to gain on Clinton. How was his performance? Could 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 he shift poll numbers? Well, you, you know, he has been surging, and, and so the, the, the big question for him was whether can he, can he keep it up? Can he raise those questions and knock uh, Clinton's front, front, rider, front runner status out from under her? He's already beating her in New Hampshire, very early primary state, and he's already pretty much neck and neck in Iowa. So two very early primary states where he's doing very well. Her concern was that his momentum would take him into South Carolina uh, looking good. Now. She found his vulnerability on this gun issue. It's funny to attack Bernie Sanders, this right. liberal icon who spent a career on Capitol Hill, uh, you know, championing liberal causes. But the gun issue has been a vulnerability. She went after it. She didn't want anybody to forget about it. And he was on the defensive on that issue. And it's not a place that he's used to being. So we'll see how it plays out in the polls. But she did find his, his Achilles heel, so to speak. Now, just like there are winners, there are also losers. In your opinion, who lost the debate? I, you know, certainly the other three on the stage, everybody's focus is on Clinton and Sanders. The other three had to have one of those moments where if they wanted to make a challenge, a, a, you know, a, a sufficient challenge and, and become a name in this race, they had to have a Carly Fiorina moment. Well, what about Martin O'Malley, who we see right now? Yeah, these guys are all great policy people. They've had, they have a career uh, of, of working with, you know, legislatures and getting things done, and they're very articulate. And, and uh, he distanced himself from, from some of the others by saying, you know, it's all a liberal fight. Everybody's trying to outleft the other. Webb uh, had some good comments. But, uh, O'Malley said, well, go back to O'Malley real quick. He's, he, you know, he said that anybody under Obamacare should, uh, should, ex should be extended to, to illegal immigrants. So that he's trying to separate himself from the pack. True. We'll see if it worked. Uh, you know, Webb on cybersecurity issues. Right. Uh, you know, he has a long background, long uh, story background in, as a Navy officer and, and, and a senator. He got some things done. GI Bill. He has the chops. He has the, uh, you know, he can reach across the aisle. There's a lot of, a lot of great things on these guys' resumes. But again, they don't have the political machines and, and they just don't have the name recognition. Well, right Lincoln Chafee on the far right, he didn't really register, it seemed. He, he, there was no gotcha moment for Lincoln Chafee, for example. No gotcha moment. You know, he's, he is, um, again, he's been in politics for a long, long time. He's been very successful on the state level, but there's no indication that he's going to rise in the national polls based on his performance. He just didn't have one of those standout, hit him out of the park moments. Now, Mike, one major difference between the Republican and Democratic debates was the lack of personal attacks. Do you think the Dems will remain friendly as the campaign continues, or are we going to see some mudslinging at some point? Well, I think that the personal attacks are, for one thing, the Republicans are going after each other because they began with 17 candidates, and yeah. you have to distance yourself. So Democrats don't have that problem. Right. So there's number one. Number two, they don't, they're not going to go after each other on a personal basis. They are going after each other on a policy basis. And you saw that with Clinton really going after Sanders. Um, over the gun control issue. Um, both of them had c come into this debate with a little bit of trepidation. Sanders doesn't want to seen, be seen attacking, you know, the front runner, the, the only woman on the stage, and bullying her. She doesn't, Clinton doesn't want to be seen attacking Bernie Sanders, who's this populist icon and is very, very, uh, you know, generating these enormous crowds. She right. doesn't want to alienate the liberal base. So she needs the left, that's she right. She needs the left. So we'll see what happens in the polls. But, uh, you know, both of them came out with fears. Both of them made some good statements, but Clinton really hit this one out of the park. Republican frontrunner Donald Trump live tweeted during the debate and said there was no true star on the stage. Is the left missing that star power? Will this debate have any impact on poll numbers at all? 
Well, you know, for Donald Trump to say that there's no star, Hillary Clinton is a star, there's no doubt about yes. that. She's been in the public eye for, for 30 years. Um, it's interesting that Donald Trump tweeted again this morning that uh, that she did exactly what she had, she had to do and, and that he, he was commending her for, for her uh, performance. So whatever he said last night, he kind of changed his mind after the, the uh, you know, any, any bad more start? feedback came in, he kind of changed his mind. So all right, we're seeing Trump. Do you think he's going to make it all the way? If you were a betting man, what would you say? I'm you not a betting man. Money. On, on, I, on Trump's, <laughs> on whoever's going to make it to the, to, the, to the finish line, do you have any, any, any insight? You're going to put me on the spot. <laughs> the, the, um, you can take it back a month from now if you want. No, the, the interesting thing about Donald Trump, and everybody was, is, is just in awe of this guy, because everything that he does, you know, he's made some very incendiary comments, incendiary comments and, and nothing seems to hurt him. Every time he says something that you think is going to be damaging, he rises in the polls. So it's very difficult to predict how this is going to happen, how this is going to play out. Uh, money is not a problem for him, obviously, but there are a lot of debates left, and there's, there's a lot of money to be yeah, spent. Yeah, my prediction is we've had the summer of fun. We're going into fall. We can have more fun in the fall, but once people start focusing and get serious, they're going to want to hear some serious stuff from the candidates, too. Mike Lillis, senior reporter for The Hill. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Morris. Appreciate it.